Moving on to the final session for the Python in WebTech series. To conduct the session on Django with PostgreSQL Super Pause, let me invite our guest speaker, Paula Mercio, to the spotlight. And before delivering him the platform to conduct the session, let me introduce our guest speaker for this evening. Paolo is a longtime Python backend developer who contributes to the Django project and gives talks at tech conferences. He has been a GNU Linux user for over 20 years and he uses and promotes free software. Paolo graduated in software engineering and is an alumnus of the University of Valgona. Marco has been working in the web for 15 years and is now the CTO of 20Tab, a Pythonic software company for which he works remotely. So without further ado, let me invite Paolo Melchior on Spotlight to conduct the session. And also all our participants and delegates of the session would be able to direct their questions to Paolo right at the end of the session during the Q&A segment. So make sure you direct all the questions that you have during the session through our Q&A segment. So let me welcome Paolo onto the spotlight. And Paolo, the platform is all yours to conduct the session. Thank you. So i share my screen. So, hello everyone, and very happy to be here with you, even if uh, remotely. In this talk, we'll see how to use some great feature of Postgres as a database in Django. In the database section of the Django documentation, we can read that Django attempts to support as many features as possible on all backends database. However, not all database backends are alike. Django per se is a, a database agnostic web framework, but real world projects based on it are not. Postgres has the richest feature of any Django supported databases, and we'll see in this talk how to use some of this superpower. Before moving on, it's important that I make this point very clear. Okay, it seemed clear to me. We can move on now. <laughs> Jokes apart, I would like to underline that I'm not a database administrator. So, who am I? I'm Paolo Mecchiore. I'm the CTO of 20Tab, a Pythonic software company for which I work remotely. I'm a software engineer, a long-time Python backend developer. After using Django for a few years, I became a contributor to the project. I also use Postgres as a database for all my Django projects, and now it's time to create one of them. As usual, to create a Django project, I use the latest Python 3 stable release, create and activate a virtual environment, in which then install the latest Django LTS version. Then, using the Django start project command, I create the basic file of our project. Let's see what it takes to add Postgres to this newly created project. I think many of you are familiar with this drawing from the little prince. This drawing is used as the header of the Twitter account of PsychoPG a Postgres driver for Python. I think it represents its goal very well. Python with Postgres inside. PsychoPG is the most used and advanced Postgres driver for Python. It implements the Python DB API 2.0 specification, and it's distributed under the LGPL license. The library was released more than 20 years ago and over time has been 
constantly improved and kept aligned with Postgres. Version 3 was released only a few months ago. PsychoPG is a wrapper for LLibPQ, the Postgres C client library. To install this package on a Debian-based system, you can use the APT package manager. For most operating systems, the quickest way to install PsychoPG is using the package available in the Python package index. Now, let's see how to use PsychoPG in Django. To use Postgres as a database in our Django project, we modify the settings, adding the PsychoPG-based database backend and the connection parameters of our Postgres database, which we may have locally or remotely. If you embrace the 12-factor methodology, you can define a database URL variable in your environment. Depending on whether you use Django database URL directly or Django configuration, your databases section should look like something like this. Let's now see our database in action. We'll use the example defined in the making queries section of the Django official documentation. For our test queries, we'll only use an outer model and an entry model, both containing various types of fields we can search on. We can perform basic queries like this on our models, but actually we can run these queries using all the other supported databases as well. But what we are really interesting is, is using Postgres specific feature from Django. For this same reason, in 2014, Mark Tamnil, a Django core developer, started a crowdfunding campaign to develop a module to contain fields for a number of Postgres specific data types. The campaign was a success and the new model was remerged in Django uh, 1.8. The model now contains Postgres specific fields, indexes, function, extension, and so on. Over the year, important function has been added, uh, such as JSON fields, full text search, random UAD, and operator classes. JSON fields have become usable also in the other supported database, but only from Django 3.1, released in 2020, five years after being introduced in the Postgres module. So, to use all the features of the Postgres module, just add it to the installed apps list in the setting files of your project. And now let's see, let's get to know some feature of this model better. I took this photo during the spring day after the DjangoCon Europe 2017 in Florence. In that day, I completed a pull request to add a database function in the Postgres module for Django 2.0. Uh, I was helped by Mark Tamil, the original creator of the Postgres module, and by Marcus Orterman, a Django core developer, both in this photo. The database function I'm talking about is random UAD. The random UAD database function returns a version 4 random UAD. It's contained in the PG crypto module that provides cryptographic functions for Postgres. It can be activated using the crypto extension migration operation. And from Postgres 13, this function is also included in core. 
to see the function in action, we'll add a UID field in our entry model. This field uses the related Python module and only when used on Postgres, this store in a specific UID data type. The database will not generate it for you, so it's recommended to use the default. But note that the UID callable is passed to the default and not an instance of it. Using the Postgres function, you can update all the values in a model way faster than cycling over all the entries and generating a new value with the related Python function. I recently used this technique to set, to set in a few seconds UIDs in a nearly 1 million rows table. I took this other photo during the spring day after EuroPython 2017 in Rimini. I promoted our working group on Django and some developers joined me. That day we started the transition of the Django project website um, search function from Elasticsearch to a Postgres full text search solution. Since then, I've written an article and give more than one presentation on full text search with Django. So I'll skip the implementation details. The full text search support in Postgres module has uh, specific fields, expression and function. If your Postgres version is recent enough, you can also use specific indexes, phrase searches or web search style. Without any customization, we are able to perform a full text search on a single field of the entry model. For example, we can search for a word in the plural form and have results in the singular form. This is a very convenient way to start using Postgres full text search out of the box. To speed up full text search, we can add a search vector for the entry model and use it to create a functional GIN index on the same model. The functional indexes are an addition of Django 3.2 available for all Django database backends, but GAN index is only available in the Postgres backend. So after that, we can search for a word using a syntax similar to the one used by search engines and have more accurate results. We can use these syntaxes using the search query with the search type attribute. Furthermore, the SQL queries will be faster thanks to the JN index. With this photo, we move virtually in Northern Europe, more precisely in Norway. I took this photo because I really like the effect of these typical houses on the water, all similar to each other, but repeated, like data in a, an array. The array field makes Postgres array types available in Django. They are very convenient for storing arrays of similar data without creating a new model for them. You specify other Django model fields as a basis. Also, its size can be defined and it can even be multidimensional. For example, we can store multiple email in a Howard Howder model by defining an array of email using the email field as a base. We can then query our authors looking for an email. The content of the field itself is represented as a list. The resulting SQL code uses all Postgres specific operators for arrays. Unfortunately, the default array field widget in the Django admin is a simple input text with comma separated values. But using this Python package, you can represent in the Django admin the values as multiple dynamically addable input text.
I took this photo in San Francisco. We are now virtually moving in California because the package we are going to talk about is provided by the California Civic Data Coalition, an open source network of journalists and computer programmers for news organizations across America. Django Postgres Copy is a Python package to quickly import and export the limited data with Django support for Postgres Copy command. The copy command moves data between tables and standard file. Copy to copies content of a table to a file. Copy from copy data from a file to a table. To more flexibility, Django Postgres Copy is, uh, uses a temporary table that are automatically dropped at the end of the session. To benchmark Postgres copy, we'll use a file containing all the geographic names from the OpenStreetMap project. We create a new model that maps each column contained in the CSV file into a field. We have to replace the model default manager with the one from Postgres copy. Here, we use the file with all the geographical names of Italy. The file is more than 200 megabytes. Uh, to upload the file, we use the specific query set method to which we pass the path of the file. The loading speed is impressive. Almost 1 million record in just over 3 seconds. Under the hood, Django Postgres copy executes several SQL statements. Create a temporary table based on the content of the file. Upload the content of the file to the temporary table in just over two seconds. Insert the data of the temporary table into the table managed by the feature Django model, applying some transformation, and finally drop the temporary table. But to reduce this space and transmission bandwidth, we have compressed our file in gzip format, reducing the size up to a fifth. Uh, we can pass our compressed file directly to the Postgres copy without having to decompress it. Loading is done in a shorter time than before. Uh, I want to repeat it. Almost 1 million records in just over 3 seconds. We are now virtually moving back in Italy with this photo that I took in a wood in Abruzzo, the region where I live. I'm showing you this photo because now we are going to talk about trees. Postgres L3, exactly. Django L3 is a tree extension to support hierarchical tree-like data in Django models using the native Postgres extension L3. It's a simple and faster alternative to the implemented materialized path compared to more used Django packages. The package has a path field and an abstract tree models. To add tree-like hierarchy to the entry model, we add a path field in everything from the tree model provided by Django L3. We also add a dedicated Postgres GIST index on the same field to speed up queries. This is a tree representation of the example hierarchical structure that we have stored in the path field of our model. I took this example from the Postgres L3 documentation. We perform a hierarchical query to filter all the contained model of a particular path, sort the result by the tree structure, and then take all the subpaths. The resulting SQL statement uses the L3 operator to filter the table and the GIST index to speed up the operation and the sorting. With this photo, we are now virtually moving 
on the path of my latest hike in the Italian Apennines. I already used this photo in my latest article series about maps with Django, which you can read on my blog. But I want to briefly talk about the geographical extension of Postgres used by Geo Django. PostGIS is a Postgres extension and it's also the best database backend for Geo Django. It internally integrates special data and has special data types, indexes, and functions. In this chart, I've synthesized the compatibility table of the geographic backends supported by GeoDjango. In the GeoDjango documentation, there are three compatibility tables, special lookups, database functions, aggregate functions. As you can see, PostGIS is the only geographic backend that supports 100% of the feature. If you are interested in using this feature, you can read my article about it. There are also many other Postgres specific features that can be used directly in Django. For example, you can use a lot of indexes and aggregation function only available in Postgres. You can also use the Trigram extension to perform fast searching for similar words. There are also specific fields only available in Postgres, like uh, range fields and case insensitive text fields, and more. Before saying goodbye, I want to share with you some tips based on my experience as a Postgres user with Django. The first one is read the documentation in the Django website because it's full of information about the Postgres feature. Read also the details about this feature in the Postgres website. It helps you to understand how things work under the hood. Read the source code of both projects in GitHub because there is something you can learn only from the source code. And as last, search for question on Stack Overflow, but try to answer question instead of reading the answer. Last but not least, you can also study this talk because it is released with a Creative Commons license. The Psycho PG Tray library is under active development and you can use this content to learn more about it, get involved and also, also sponsor its development. The company I work for, 20Tab, is one of the sponsors of this library. In 20Tab, we have developed many Django projects using Postgres. You can find out more about our open source project and our Protonic work using these contacts. And finally, to find out more about my personal work with Django and Postgres, use all my contacts. With this QR code, you can download this presentation on my website. Thanks again for having me and enjoy the, con the conference. Ciao a tutti. much Paolo. So I think uh, we can go to the segment. Yes. Um, yep. So let me direct the questions to you. I hope my screen is visible to you as well. And yes. Move yes. on to the question. Why we use PostgreSQL with Django? What are the benefits? So I, as I shown, uh, there are more feature in Postgres than in other uh, database backend in Django. Uh, all the one I showed you are only available in Postgres and not in other uh, in other database backends. Uh, uh, and also, Postgres is the only database backend that has um, a reserved module inside the Django core. So, if you can choose. The, the database in, for your project, I really suggest to use Postgres instead of uh, other. All right. Uh, thank you. And let's move on to another question. Uh, yes. yes. 
how to configure our local Postgre logs to know what our Django app is asking from our database and read those logs. Okay, I think you can read how to um, uh, find the logs of Postgres database uh, on the Postgres uh, uh, documentation itself, because in every system, uh, the package of Postgres uh, store logs in uh, slightly different uh, path, uh, and it's not difficult to find in the official documentation. But if you are working with Django and you are um, experimenting in the shell, I really suggest to use the Django the debug toolbar uh, shell in which you can um, read the SQL statement uh, when you execute a query on the Django ORM. So it's a live uh, log in some ways. And moving on to another question, since we have time, I think we can move on to a couple yeah. of questions. Yeah. Uh, yes. So we have a question from Indika. Uh, why Django recommend Postgres SQL while MySQL is much popular? Is there any special reason for it? Yes, as I said before, if you need more feature, Postgres has more feature than MySQL. If you need, for example, um, geographic module, PostGIS is the most advanced, as I've shown in the, in the slides. Um, if you have special um, needs, I think Postgres uh, uh, as the main uh, f f feature, feature set if you already have MySQL in your project, I think it's 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 good enough to do all the work because the ORM is a um, database agnostic, uh, like I said at the initial slide of the of my presentation. But if you can choose, why don't choose um, an open source database that is uh, um, more uh, capable of uh, satisfy your needs? So why not? Yes, and I hope uh, Indika got the answer as well. And moving on to another question. Um, yes, yeah. uh, by Gihan. So what are the exclusive features present in PostgreSQL contribute model and are the superpowers that can be exploited through the use of third party packages? But I, I think uh, the country module in the Django um, code base uh, uh, try to use some of the um, uh, of the Postgres feature, but uh, Postgres has a lot of um, feature. You have to try to um, use uh, with thirty five packages. I shown some of them. For example, the Django Postgres copy, uh, use the, um, the copy command of Postgres. Uh, the Django L3 is a 30 pack, 30 party package. It used the L3 extension. And uh, there are also other 30 package. I invite you to be careful of what 30 30 party package you use in your project because some of them are not updated and some other of them implements features that are already implemented in the Django country module for Postgres. So I prefer to use the official um, the official uh, module and if I can do another way, I search for other packages to use very, very specific feature. Thank you so much, uh, Paolo. Um, is it okay Thank for you. you to take up another few questions so we can yeah. wind up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me hear. Yes. Um, all right. So we have quite a, a lot of similar questions, but I will direct them to you as well. 
So why should we use PostgreSQL over MSQL? This Python has extensive support or some other specific feature for PostgreSQL. Um, as I shown uh, in my slide, PsychoPG is the, um, the driver, the Python driver for Postgres. I think is one of the most advanced one and uh, it maps a lot of internal uh, uh, formats and uh, specific types. So for example, the UAD uh, field with the type in Postgres is implemented as a different type in the database and uh, not in MySQL, for example. And uh, Psycho PG3, the version 3, is the, uh, is the latest one of the, this package and is totally uh, async. So it, it is more advanced and you can start using um, the new asynchronous um, feature of, of Python 3. So uh, as I said before, if you already have MySQL in your uh, on your stack, it, it's good. But if you can choose or you have to start a new project, you can start with Postgres using PsychoPG as a, a driver and have the possibility to implement very, uh, very specific feature easily. So I, I only suggest. Yes, so before we end our session, just one last question for you. And uh, yes, um, let me find that for you. All right. Okay. So how do I query a Postgres database in Python? So this will be the last question. Okay, um, using, for example, a driver like PsychoPG. Uh, in my suggestion at the end of the talk, I, I invited you to read the documentation of Postgres uh, and the, um, also the code in it. And I want to suggest you also to read the documentation of PsychoPG itself because it's well written is uh, updated in the last months. I also contributed to it, and I think it's the best way to start querying database, uh, Postgres database directly from from Python. Uh, with few example, you need only uh, a working Postgres uh, uh, database and uh, a connection to it, and you can start. Uh, uh, querying and uh, el elaborating the results uh, directly in Python. If you don't want to use Django, it's all right. All right. With that, we'll come to the end of the Q&A session with Paolo and also the session with Paolo that we had. And um, I hope that all the participants got a clear understanding as to what this session was through Paolo with his insights. And uh, thank you so much, Paolo, for taking your time and also for conducting a very insightful session with great inputs for all our participants and delegates over here. I hope and I was, I'm pretty sure that they have learned new things and also they would implement them in their future techno careers along with Python. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Paolo, once again. for being Thank you for us. having me. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the amazing delegates, the participants who stayed with us throughout the day along with all these sessions and also with the final session for the web track series. So as we come to the very end of the sessions under the track Python for web, I hope each and every participant was able to discuss and gain new insights with regard to the functionalities of Python in web and also maybe improve their or spectrum about Python in the web series. So now we invite you all to the main session to join us with the closing ceremony of PyCon Sri Lanka 2022. It will begin in a while. So I hope that just after this session, you all will have a few minutes and maybe you can join for the 
main session, the closing uh, for the closing remarks with a keynote speech as well. And so this is the end of the final session for this series. And thank you so much for each and every one for actively participating for the Python conference organized by ISEC in University of Moratua in collaboration with Matt Fitz. So signing off, Prashansa Gunavadana, moderator for the track Python in Web. See you all and have a nice day. Bye. Bye.